Hello and welcome to Desert Rat Fiber Arts. I'm Desert Rat, but you can call me Lloyd. Today we're going to continue our uh, fiber study for 2023. Um, sorry, this one's a little bit late. Uh, things have kind of changed around here, uh, work schedules. Uh, so that means my recording schedule is also going to change up a little bit. Hopefully I'll still be able to get these out on Fridays. This one might go out a little bit sooner uh, to make up for the fact that we didn't get one this week. Um, so today we're going to continue with the fiber study in working in the global collection and today we're going to be doing gray merino now i have not find anything to say that there's a specific breed called gray merino so we're just going to go with merino now i have uh spun merino blended with something else i don't think i've ever spun it by itself so i know it's supposedly pretty slick and um i know it's, it's very soft and whatnot so we're going to find out a little bit more about the merino here um now this says it's from non most Mulsed sheep and I'll explain that because I looked it up and it's a little disturbing um, But I'll tell you about that in a moment here. This says it's 23 microns with an average staple length of 75 to 80 millimeters or about three inches All right So let's take a look in the field guide fleece. These are merino sheep These are what is most common? Uh, this used for uh, commercial wool. So let's uh, read a little bit about them. Uh, origins from Spain. Fleece weights six and a half to 40 pounds, which is three to 18 kilograms. That's a lot of wool. Now you know why they're used for uh, commercial. Lots of wool. Staple length is two inches to five inches or five to 13 centimeters. Fiber diameters is 11 and a half to 26 microns. Natural colors are whites for the most part, some blacks and browns. We've got some gray here is what we got. It says here, in the 12th century, Spanish royalty began importing rams from the Beni Marinas, members of the Berber tribe in what is now Morocco. The Spanish crossed the rams with their own ewes the result was a fine wool sheep like no other. It changed the world of wool profoundly. Okay. Although Merino is one of the most recognizable names in fleece, there are dozens of identified Merino breeds around the world, and the softness level of Merino wools vary noticeably from ultra-fine to relatively sturdy. Merinos grow large quantities of dense, fine wool. The locks are blunt, often weathered with regular crimp. The fibers heavy, coat of grease must be washed out in very hot water with a reliable cleaning agent and no agitation as merino felts easily you can spin from the lock comb or card the wool's fine fineness means it forms nets easily you may want to use a fine tooth combs cotton carters or fine car fiber carding cloth to produce thick yarns spin several thin nicely twisted strands and ply them together Okay, effects of dyes, white wools take color well. Best use merino is wonderful for lightweight, soft, delicate fabrics and garments, including baby clothes, it felts easily. Now, before I um, open this up and take a look at it, let me explain what, what it means by um, non-mulsed sheep. Um, uh, I looked it up and there was a uh shepherd in uh it was in oh, my, my my brain in australia <laughs> that uh was um uh shearing his sheep when he accidentally cut the skin around the anus of the sheep um and uh, and that, uh, and then, you know, of course, he, he put some antiseptic on there. And later on, he found out that that part of the sheep, the scar tissue that was there, the wool would not grow in there. Um, so, it serves two purposes. Usually, if they want to, um, it's called mulesing, 
when they milk the sheep, um, they usually bob the tail at the same time. Uh, one of the purposes is that it um, prevents dung tags from clinging to that part of the wool. Um, secondly, because merino, if you've ever seen one after it's been shorn, they are very wrinkly animals. And um, the skin around their anus is uh, highly susceptible to a certain type of fly that likes to embed its larvae into the skin there, which causes, of course, all kinds of issues for the animal. It usually winds up killing the animal in the long run. So, mulesing is good to help the animals live longer and it produces a little cleaner sheep. The bad part about it is they usually don't give the animals anesthesia when they perform this process. So it's kind of morbid in some respects. There's pictures of it online, videos of it. I don't suggest looking at them unless you're into that kind of thing. Uh, I'm not going to... I saw the pictures. I did not want to watch the video. Um, it just happened to be on the page I was looking this up. Uh, I don't suggest doing that. Um, again, it serves a purpose, but if you really care about these animals, you, you wouldn't want to do this to your own unless they were necess you know, had some type of anesthesia, and then, of course, using an antiseptic to keep it clean afterwards. It's good because it helps the animals live a longer life, but it's bad because they do it when the animal is wide awake, and usually at about six months of age, too. So that's what milsing is. Um, it's, it's controversial. Uh, and, then, and, of course, the sheep that this came from was not milsed. Uh, this probably did not come from Australia um, because I think they, they mostly do it there because of that that particular insect that likes to lay its uh, larvae within the folds of the the merino sheep. So, sorry if that's a little disturbing, <laughs> but let's get on with the actual fiber itself. So I'm going to pull it out of here, um, put that aside. Um, now, this is very soft. Very, very soft. Smooth, silky feeling. Uh, if you've ever worked with Merino, you know exactly what I am feeling here. I'm going to pull that off there. Grab a staple length here. Got a fairly good size staple length here. Um, and my ruler here, if I go from there to there, it's about five inches. So that's pretty good. Now, so I'm going to go ahead and get my wheel set up and I'm going to start to, to spin this and we'll see how it turns out. Again, I've never spun Merino by itself, so it'll be interesting to see how it turns out for me. So, see you in a bit.
the next day the yarn has been wet finished and hung up to dry and here it is now this is so soft very very squishy got quite a bit of stretch to it i can see why merino is like the number one um fiber out there for from from wool um it was incredible to spin it spun up beautifully i did not have any issues with it slipping i did have a couple of points in the plying where it drifted apart on me while i was plying it and i probably just didn't add enough twist in those areas other than that i had absolutely no issues with this um we got about 44 yards um uh, chain plied and it's about a bulky or seven wraps per inch so we did pretty good on that little bit, little sample of uh, gray merino. Now uh, I just noticed that there was another uh, sample of merino that is 18.5 microns that was in the box. Um, I'm not going to spin this <laughs> today. I'm not going to record it. We've already seen merino, but let's just take a look at it and see. You know, just. Wow, I don't. I don't know if I if I could personally tell the difference between the two. It is very soft. It's um. Let's see how long this. There's only a small sample here, maybe half an ounce or so. Um, looks like it's got a good five inch staple, similar to the other one. So I'll have to spin that up and um on my own and see what I think of that. Um, so let me get that put away. So have you spun Merino? Uh, I know it's usually not a beginner friendly fiber. 
but um, I enjoyed it. Have you spun it? What are your thoughts on it? Um, so next week we are going to be doing um, Perrindale from New Zealand. That's what we got here. Um, so yeah, about 28 to 33 microns. So roughly the same softness as what this should be. And this has a staple length of uh, 80 to 120 millimeters or 3 to 5 inches on it. So this can be fun to try spinning that up. I don't think I've ever spun Perrindale. I, um, maybe if it was blended with something, but I, off the top of my head, I don't think I've ever spun Perrindale. So we'll have to see what that holds. So that's it. So until next time, the Desert Rat, happy crafting.